I've got a very special guest guests with me tonight. I've got <laughs> Shannon Unger from the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center at USC Aiken. And Shannon, tell us a little bit about what Ruth Patrick Science Education Center does. Um, well, we really focus on education, mostly K through 12 education. We have school groups that come a lot and come see our animals. Um, we do science, uh, chemistry type experiments. We go to the plantarium, we go hiking, we go bird watching, uh, digging critters out of the pond and the soil. Um, and just generally teaching them about science and STEM education as well. So sometimes it's introducing kids to nature um, mm -hmm. and not just always plain education. Right, and often kids will be walking in the woods and they'll say, hey, is this hiking? And I say, it is hiking. I've had a kid one time say that I've only seen hiking on TV. Oh, so wow. just walking in the woods itself might be the experience that that kid needed. Very nice. Well, you said that you guys have a lot of animals. We do. Um, in addition to some of the ones that we're going to introduce tonight, what else do you guys have? Well, we have some alligators. We just got a brand new little baby, about a month old, cute as can be, named Holden. Uh, we have other snakes, and we have uh, turtles, and salamanders, and frogs, and toads, and I don't know. It changes a lot. We got snails, and beetles, and worms. And you'd be surprised how excited kids get about worms. Oh, one, <laughs> worms. It must, the boys always love worms. Um, you've brought one of the toads with us tonight. I did. Um, over here is one of our large female toads that we use a lot in our programming. Um, she's just a big... Uh, a big beautiful girl. Uh, she's a southern toad. She's finally stopped hopping. She's been hopping all night. Um, the kids love to see her. We like to talk about how frogs and toads are amphibians, not reptiles, and how frogs and toads are different. Um, often they're confused um, with each other. So, so is it true that um, if, if they get juices on you, will you get warts? <laughs> well, I, I believe that old wives' tale came from the fact that they have these glands behind their eyes. They kind of look like kidney beans right behind their eyes and um, they can produce a toxin that can irritate your hands, and, um, but not so much warts, so Vicki. They can also, if you ever had a dog that got a toad in its mouth, it gets all frothed up. Yeah. That's from that toxin coming from back their eyes, but warts, no, no okay. warts. Okay, no warts. Well, we've got two um, very nice <laughs> reptiles here. Um, tell us a little bit about what we've got. Sure, and even in the cage too, there you might be kind of hiding, but these are all corn snakes, and corn snakes are very common to this area. And they're not venomous, they're obviously. They're not venomous, or we not be handling them, yes. But I do always tell the kids anything with the mouth can bite, so don't go picking up uh, snakes on the trail, give them hugs and kisses, because I, I was holding one. Um, these guys have been handled a lot. Um, they're, they're quite docile since we've been handling them so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you're holding right there is the normal coloring, corny there. It um, has the coloring you would see that would be nice and camouflaged and leaf litter, where the one I'm holding, Casper, which is a good name for this month, um, would not hide very well unless his environment consists of white pillowcases, which it does not. So I'm glad that we have him because he wouldn't make it very long in the wild. Now, what, um, what kind of things do these eat? Well, in, at uh, the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center, they eat little uh, rats that are not alive anymore. Um, and sometimes they even eat crickets and sometimes they even eat worms. Okay. Um, we've got another lovely little guest here. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, she's, she's awfully small, but it looks <laughs> like an owl. Um, can you tell us a little bit about her? Sure. I'll see if I can get her to turn around a little bit. Oh, well, then she's going to turn the other way. That's how they work. Um, right here in front of you, oh, <laughs> there we go, is a Miss Lina. Now, Miss Lina came to us, as did all our birds, because of an injury. Um, unfortunately, you can see on her left eye, it doesn't properly um, get larger and smaller according mm -hmm. to the light that so comes in. she's not releasable. She's not releasable, and she can't see all that well of that, that eye, we believe. Okay. Um, but she, uh, she came to us. She's been wonderful with the children. She is what's called screech owl. Screech mm -hmm. owls are real common in this area. But and this is as big as it'll get, right? And she's a girl. She's even a big one for a, a screech owl. So okay. she's even a big girl, and um, she ha she's housed with another big girl and a little boy, um, and the kids love her. Um, she makes kind of a horse sound, a whoo, whoo sound at night. If you ever hear that walking outside or in your yard, that might be a screech owl, right? Right, um, living in your tree. Very nice. Well, I've also brought um, some insects with me um, that I kind of want to show everybody. Um, in the extension office, we get a lot of phone calls about. Um, worms on the tomatoes, and um, they're actually tobacco hornworms um, instead of tomato hornworms, but um, there's a little bit of difference between the two. 
but these are normal size caterpillars. These are very, very large. Um, I had a, an older gentleman come in one day and it was kind of neat. He had a jar, a mason jar of these things and there was five of them in there and, and they were so large that you could, you could hear their mouth parts scratching on the glass. It was, it was amazing. And he was like, are these mutants? What is this? Um, but they actually turn into a very nice um, sphinx moth. Um, this is a hawk moth um, in the family Sphingidae. Very spectacular, very large. Um, some of the largest moths that we have around. Um, another insect that I brought, um, in the news lately we've had um, a lot of folks talk about camel crickets. And it's not that they're anything new, but we've had these actually for a number of years now. And camel crickets tend to be in environments with high humidity like the basement or in crawl spaces, underneath stairs, things like that. Um, and it's, it's nothing new. Um, we have had these for a while and pest control operators treat them with baits and it's actually pretty effective, pretty easy to get rid of. Um, but this is something that we've, we've had for a long time. It's, it's nothing new. So, but um, now we've got, this is, this is the favorite the thing grand finale. that we've been looking for all <laughs> night. Um, who is this? Well, uh, Vicki, this is Raleigh. Raleigh is a barred owl that lives with us at Ruth Patrick Science Education Center. And he, unfortunately, is not releasable as well. Um, he has a broken wing that didn't fully heal. So mm -hmm. he can fly, but not very straight, which makes it hard to get little scurrying mice to eat. Um, both of these guys and most raptors that come in from injury is from being hit by a car, okay. which often happens when you get trash and food on the road. So it's all the more reason not to litter, right. not to throw things out. If keep you're our, gonna, put them, put your trash in proper places. Right, right, and um, that will keep our birds more safe. And um, if you even look, uh, we have uh, Raleigh a barred owl, and then we had a little, little screech line in the front, and we even have a uh, taxidermy gray horned owl. So those are three of the four local owls that live here. And what's the fourth um, one? A barn owl. A so barn, barn owl. owls are white with a heart-shaped face. Okay. And all of them are nocturnal and they all, they have those flat faces, so they're not as fast as say a hawk could fly, which is very aerodynamic, but they have very silent flight, so they can sneak up on their prey, um, where a hawk would use speed more than sneaking. Okay, now we kind of have to be careful where we are placement-wise, right. because naturally... We have a big food chain here. Okay, <laughs> we do, it's well, even larger <laughs> than this, but naturally Raleigh... Raleigh might eat a bird like Lina. Okay. Um, Raleigh might eat a snake or a toad or all kinds of things, or even some of those yummy insects. So, um, yeah, so we, we keep them separate, but they're well-fed, so I don't think they're gonna give us too much of a fuss.